be even more problematic. However, when one businessman decided to take geese from the island of Taiwan in the south and raise them way up in the country's far northeast, the process was surprisingly problem-free. Every spring, a goose farm in Naimanchi in Inner Mongolia autonomous region hatches over a million goose chicks. Some of them are sold to other local farms, but most remain at the farm where they are bred for their down. By the time a goose is three months old, its feathers have matured sufficiently to be collected as down. Throughout its whole life, a single goose will produce down feathers worth more than 20 yuan. But even though goose feathers represent such a potentially rich source of income, they are in short supply on the global market. Chen Kunrong, the owner of the Naimanqi goose farm, came to the mainland from Taiwan in the mid-1990s. Most of its counterparts from the island chose to set up in business in the more developed southern coastal areas. But Chen Guanrong opted instead for the northeastern province of Liaoning. And so, having decided to establish a goose dam factory on the mainland, Chen Kuenrong headed for the northeast. It was drawn to Shenyang, the capital of Liaoning province, because of its long history of industrial development and well-established transport infrastructure. He invested 13 million yuan in setting up a down processing factory in the city. Equipped with state-of-the-art facilities, Chen Kuenrong's factory was capable of processing 24 tons of down a day. So, if the factory operated at full capacity, the potential profits were enormous. Chen Kuenrong was confident, and as soon as the factory was operational, he signed a huge supply contract with some of his Taiwan-based customers. Before long, though, he was facing disaster. The date when the delivery was due was fast approaching, and Chen Kuenrong had no idea where he could get the goose feathers he needed to produce the huge amount of down he was contracted to supply. It was then that he realized that the private goose farms in the Northeast were simply not up to supplying him with all the feathers he needed. As he scoured the region, looking for new, bigger goose feather suppliers, an idea occurred to Chen Kuenrong. With feather supplies falling well short of demand, Chen Kuenrong was forced to close his factory for almost nine months of the year. So he reached a decision. He would become self-sufficient by raising geese at a farm of his own. He would raise a long down species of goose native to Taiwan, which was bigger in body size and produced more down. The only question was, would the southern species adapt to the conditions in the north? Initially, Chen Kuenrong experimented by placing a batch of newly hatched Taiwan geese into a northern goose farm and having them raised in exactly the same way as was done locally. The chicks flourished and showed every sign of adapting completely to the colder environment of the north. In the course of the next two years, Chen Kuenrong set up his own goose farm and expanded it. By 2003, the number of geese at his farm exceeded 10,000. Even so, the farm was still not supplying enough feathers to keep the factory operating at full capacity. Chen Kuenrong needed to expand his farm further, and to do so, he had to acquire more land. 
But land so near to the provincial capital was prohibitively expensive. Then he heard some interesting news. The local authorities in Naimanchi, in the eastern part of Inner Mongolia, were campaigning to attract investors as a way of driving the modernization of the regional economy. So Chen Quanrong went to Inner Mongolia and set up his new, bigger goose farm there. Inner Mongolia has vast swaths of land and an abundance of farming resources. Plenty of goose feed was available, and more importantly, since Naimanchi bordered Liaoning province, transport between the new farm and the factory in Shenyang would be relatively straightforward. In addition to setting up his new farm, Chen Kunrung also planned to recruit the local farmers to join him in raising geese. This, he hoped, would bring about a fundamental increase in supplies of goose down for his factory. Having begun the construction of his new farm, which was several times bigger than the one in Shenyang, it was time for Chen Quanrong to implement the second stage of his plan, convincing the local farmers to raise geese. To his disappointment, the farmers at first rejected his idea. It seemed they didn't trust a businessman from Taiwan. And so, for a year, Chen Quanrong's expansion plan made slow progress, fueled only by the limited increase in the number of geese at his enlarged farm. Right up until the spring of 2005, sales of goose chicks hatched at his farm remained sluggish. But then, things took a dramatic turn for the better. Earlier in the year, there had been a problem maintaining the electricity supply to the incubation rooms at Chen Guanrong's farm. As a result, the first hatch of goose chicks to hatch that year were very weak. Several weeks before, Chen Guanrong had signed a contract with a local goose farmer called Meng Fan Chiu to supply him with this batch of chicks. Concerned about maintaining his reputation as a supplier of quality chicks, Chen Quanrong persuaded Meng Fanqiu to wait and take the second batch instead. The story spread among the local farmers, and Chen Quanrong's reputation received a much-needed boost. Suddenly, he found he was acquiring many new customers. Each year now, Chen Quanrong's farm breeds 400,000 geese, an additional 600,000 are raised at private farms nearby, making a million in total. The increased supply of goose feathers has gone a long way to meeting the demand of Chen Quanrong's down factory in Shenyang. Although he has yet to attain his goal, processing three tons of goose feather a day, this Taiwan entrepreneur's efforts are paying off, slowly but surely. It's shape and color. In recent years, <laughs> 2007年12月第二届孔子学院大会在北京举行截止到2008年10月 在全球已开办二百九十二家。孔子学院传达着汉语汉字的魅力。目前海外学习的人数超过三千万，到二零一零年将达到一亿。汉字跨越千山万水，打破千年时间的阻隔，悄然将中国文化带到了世界每一个角
，语言就是一个交往的工具，但是要看看人自己的历史，然后会会把中文，呃呃，定在里边所以你会有一个一个，呃呃，主动的学中文的一个兴趣，哎，一个动力，能够通过。汉字的结构，汉字的这样的一种意意向去学习，它会